Okay, this is uh, Peter Gould. I'm the uh, co-creator, executive producer of uh, Better Call Saul. And hi, I'm uh, Patrick Fabian. I play Howard Hamlin. Hi, I'm Skip McDonald, the editor of the episode. Hi, I'm Bradley Paul, and I am the writer of the episode. I'm Nina Jack, producer. Ray Seahorn, actor. Jennifer Bryan, costume designer. That, that woman looking through the blinds, honest to God, looks like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did get Patrick's mother in. This is the surprise. Good, good. The surprise of this episode. And that was a real lizard. What, what, what was the deal with the, this, this episode, of course, was directed by Nicole Casal, who did, just did a great job. So What's good. the story with a lizard, you guys? Um, we were sitting around talking. We thought, wouldn't it be cool if, if we had you know, a lizard, this kind of like primal thing happening? And uh, I, I guess... In Albuquerque, it's kind of easy, actually, to find somebody who um, is, they, they are lizard wranglers. And, uh, <laughs> of course and there we, is. And we uh, got this guy, and he's, we started you know, proposing a bunch of uh, different kinds of lizards, and he said, no, no, I'll just catch one on the site. He shows up, and he walks around with his hands out, and within like two or three minutes, he has a lizard. And okay, and, <laughs> and the lizard what? took direction. So he's really more of a lizard finder. Yeah, exactly. Actually, my, yeah. my daughter, my, my, my daughter's been very good at catching lizards also. Really? <laughs> but they're not so easy to actually do what you want them to do. No, but you guys <laughs> managed to own. do it. Could you open the door, please? And uh, of course, this is, this is the, the brilliant Michael McKeon here okay, as Chuck. And. Uh, we, this <laughs> teaser is a little bit different because we're we're in in Chuck's world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting if I, if I can give a spoiler and shoot ahead a little sure. bit. Sure. Um, the uh, the episode both opens and closes with the police arriving at somebody's door, and somebody who is not uh, Bob slash Jimmy uh, for once. And so uh, we actually open with the police coming to Chuck's door and close with the police coming to uh, Mike's door, and it's sort mm. of a nice little right. uh, symmetry there. <laughs> I love the that, that, that uh, Chuck thinks he's 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 going to keep them out. He's going to keep them at bay. Yeah. When clearly, I think as an audience member, I'm like, oh no, you, you're in trouble and you don't realize it yet. You know, and I like that sense of foreboding that's in it. Yeah, the police generally don't show up and say, oh, okay then. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Bradley, you did you did a, a great job of getting all the the, the police thinking. Uh, clear here where they, you know, that they're they're they probably would leave him alone for a newspaper, but for what this. This police officer is about to, uh, right. to see. Uh, well, it's also yeah. because Chuck won't open the door. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you were a normal person, yeah, this you is this is uh, Jacob Brown. I think he does a really a really nice job. Yeah, I thought the policemen were great in this one. And uh, and Jennifer, mm-hmm. uh, so your dress. Is there anything? Is do you, when you're when you're dressing a police officer, is there anything anything that you're th- what are you thinking about? Because this is a uniform. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, a uniform, and it has to look authentic. But it can't, there are some things that I can't authenticate, like the badges. At first pass, it will look like uh, you know an Albuquerque APD um, badge. But then we have to go in and make some subtle artistic changes to it, oh. so that our you know we, we can't really impersonate. A uh-huh. police uh, officer. So the badge looks like it's right, but if you if you were to go up close, there are a couple of elements that will usually change mm-hmm. in it. Otherwise, um, very authentic looking. I'm going to interrupt and just say, wow, that's a this was, that was a great, so great shot. Yes. That. Nicole, that that job. Nicole came up with, yep. and then our, our effects team finished. It's yep. just so special. Yes, yeah, yeah. several layers there, but it's so cool. Yeah. No walkie-talkies, no flashlights. Definitely. And she's also uh, this is a slightly Dutch angle here, so mm-hmm. she's 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 canting the camera like, very subtly here. Mm-hmm. And, and how the suspense builds with everything with editorial, sound design. The music's it's so just good. Amazing. The sound, yep. yeah. Ugh. And, and all this, these openings. This this title is actually lift. This is one of the few that's actually lis- lifted from footage from Breaking Bad. Oh, okay. Oh. So there there oh, it really? is. Jennifer, do you love or hate? how clear a freeze frame is now with HD cameras that well, they can I see you, those badges. They, yeah, I know. I just, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I love HD. But we, can also, <laughs> but we can also see the beautiful fabrics you put on yes. Fabian. <laughs> beautiful Tasmanian wool. Every thread. <laughs> and it may be difficult to see. On this property, there are actually like real buffalo out there. I mean, they, really? they sort of appear as little dots on here. Um, n- not those posts, but there are actually buffalo wandering around wow. uh, out there. Yeah, this is an amazing location. Uh, this 
Who lives look, in this house? Yeah, we, like, this house actually, was crazy. What's interesting, that we actually scouted this house for Breaking Bad. This was uh, oh. one of the candidates to be uh, the house in, in, epi- in the final episode of Breaking Bad. Jim. With uh, <laughs> We did scout this for Gretchen Elliott's house. Gretchen and Elliott. Yeah. And oh. it, it stayed with us. And that, so when... Um, when we started talking about this episode, we thought, wouldn't that be fun to be, uh, wouldn't this be fun to be Big, Big Ricky's house? And, and by, by the scenes. way, there was a smaller room we couldn't, for you know, just uh, practical reasons, couldn't shoot in because of the size. But that, without any dressing whatsoever, was absolutely covered in taxidermy uh, really? safari That's what I was going to ask, is how much of this is set decoration and how much um, is from the house? Mo- most of this is from the house. Uh, I mean, no, so, no, no, no. So, set, there's a lot of it, Fred, that uh, is set dressing. Oh, okay, okay. In. Yeah. I, think, I, I guess I'm still thinking of that one office, but you remember. It, it was, was so overwhelming that I can understand. It was, it was a 360 <laughs> degree turnaround, and it's just one dead head after the other. <laughs> really? <laughs> this guy's so good. And uh, is, this is Joe Berryman and uh, our, our wonderful uh, Albuquerque casting. A casting director, Kira K, uh, found found him. Is and he, he local? Is just, yes. He is local. And we actually did see people from, from all over. And this this was the guy. And he he's so funny and he's so, he's so good. So real. Yeah. And Jennifer, where'd you find that shirt? Oh my gosh. But you know what well, one good thing is that in Albuquerque. Hey Bradley. That, hey. Hey Bradley. Awesome. <laughs> that I, I got kind that of, freeze frame p- yeah. printed out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that kind of Western look is not too hard to find there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, the was one of my easier days, yes. <laughs> Ricky, I'm all ears. I want to secede from the United States. Now, I got 1,100 acres of property here, self-sustaining with solar power and wells, a sovereign state immune to the business-killing regulations of the country in which it geographically lies. And, and what about Bob's suit? You wanna, do you want to talk a little bit about this suit that Bob is wearing? Yeah, he's in one of his best brown suits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what's what's special about the suit, Jennifer? Well, this one um, is when I picked the one with, yeah. with pinstripes, so it would look more more lawyer-like, you know, more, more business-like. He's got um, four brown suits, but this is the one that looks closer to successful lawyer, so... Mm. He wears that suit when he makes these um, these new inquiries, where he thinks he's going to get all these fat clients. <laughs> and you know, one of the interesting accidents here is, um, is that uh, you know we think Jimmy's coming here to sort of stalk this po- potential client, but mm-hmm. if you look at the animals behind him, it's the lions and the like the mountain lions behind <laughs> Big Ricky, and it's the gazelles behind Jimmy. He's the he's the oh, one wow. being he's the wow. one being hunted here. He's like the sucker basically. And I, I, I noticed that halfway through the shot, and I bl- it blew my mind. Do you think that was that was that random, or is that something you and Nicole were up to? I'm, I'm gonna ch- I'm gonna say it was it was subconsciously intentional. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. There you go. Wow. If we could do it, a uh, continued shout out to our art department. This painting that is on the wall yes. behind that they. They've put together. We did a, a photo shoot with with Joe, and they photoshopped in his, this hunting painting. It's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? Oh yeah. This, I remember that. Yes. This location was a. Hu- uh, this is one of the the most difficult things for the art department in this entire episode, uh, because there is so much bespoke material here, yeah. and and uh, it, it, Joe Joe's personality shines through in every piece, yeah. uh, including the paintings mm-hmm. that you're not quite seeing. And look at all that money! That's a little, <laughs> hey. yeah. doing a, that's a little bit of a Breaking Bad shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks like he's taking cookies out of an oven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Smells then, like cookies. That he baked himself. And then yeah. this, I love this little bit. Sometimes it's fun when, when there's no dialogue. I love this little bit of mime here. And Bob is just, he just <laughs> and, and one thing it doesn't show on this on this shot of the thing that I'm particularly proud of on the back side of these uh, bills it's uh, a picture of the Sandia Mountains but it also has That's the freedom. motto of the sovereign Sandia Republic <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is freedom, liberty, independence <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, we want to sell those <laughs> yeah. we want to sell those Sandia Republic bills <laughs> And that in the painting there that's behind Bob, that also was created by the art department. Yeah. It's, the, it's a big Lions fight and with, zebras fighting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's so good. Oh, another classic scene. Mr. McGill, hi. Thanks so much for coming. I loved this guy. What was this guy's name? Tim, Tim Baltz. Baltz. Tim Baltz. So Baltz. funny. Jimmy. Absolutely. And so earnest, Hello. so mm-hmm. all American. I yeah. think he's. I think at this point in the scene, I really think that Jimmy's got a good client here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I needed help, that's all. And one thing you can't see here is yeah. there are a whole bunch of crew people on this anything. other side of the We're camera. We're all in the garage. All, I was there. <laughs> yeah, they're all stacked in the garage, and they're all trying not to laugh all at the same time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Skip, one of the things I love, and I've said this before, uh, is, is I love how you, you, you hold on some of these shots. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Is it different cutting a, a scene that's funny versus a dramatic scene? Is there anything mm. different that you're thinking about? A, a little bit. It's the timing. It's the, the delivery of the lines and making sure that they land right in, in the comedy sense. Mm-hmm. Where the, the drama, it's, you know, you, you can hold a little beat longer on people before they respond to the line or, or deliver their line. Oh, but for timing of a comedic thing, you've got to cut or hold if yeah, the if yeah. the reaction is the joke. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's just it's just a matter of what the actors are doing and huh. and how they're delivering the lines. It, it, it adjusts your pacing a little bit. That's 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 so interesting because some of this, of course, you could pace a lot of this material much much more quickly. Yes, you could race through it. And and to me, it's the uh, it's it's the it's the pay, part of the pace mm-hmm. of it is is part of the humor. Oh, is for that sure. it's, it's a little bit it's a little bit there's a lot of build up here, uh, and of course these these guys are both. <laughs> I love I love how Tim Baltz uses his body. I love how he's. He, yeah, he, he sort of like bends he, from the waist like a marionette. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Looks like a character yeah. from a uh, from a Christmas a Rankin Bass Christmas special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bent. Bent, right. It's really, it's really, and Nicole, of course, and Arthur have have given us these beautiful wide shots mm-hmm. yeah. that, that give us give us so much more. Oh, and with them using their body so much to act with, you get to stay there longer, so you get to <laughs> see what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where this is where Jimmy's career is. <laughs> and of course, this is Tim Baltz doing doing the vocal recording, voice. right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. This... When did they record that? Like days uh, before? No, or... uh, literally um, a- half an hour before we started shooting the scene. We went into a room, got out a mic, and he did it all. He nailed it. Uh, but I believe, if I, unless I'm wrong, the uh, the later scene where Bob is doing mm-hmm. actually doing the voice, yeah. Yeah. that actually was shot first. So? You're, yes, you're correct. So, you're, so Tim had to do it over yes. the phone for Bob yes. so Bob could imitate Tim. Sorry. Yes. Well, Everything's out of order. <laughs> what, what is that suggested? And we had to it, stop it, everything it at one point because the l- toilet lid broke. Yeah, when, when the oh. first reveal, when they, when they pulled off the uh, the tarp, uh, the toilet lid fell it over. It caught and just, on the lid, yeah. Yeah, and it broke. And, and we, I did not know lids were not universal until yeah. you guys yeah. sent tons our, of people trying to find the exact yeah. lid that was so in How did Tim feel about that, stopping production for a broken <laughs> toilet? Yeah, right. yeah, so one thing, we had to stop for lightning, but we have to stop for a broken toilet. <laughs> this, is, and it's, this is actually, uh, those of you who are watching this at home, this is on the, uh, the gag reel. And you can hear the whole crew go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> when, that, when that lid breaks. Therapy. Are these houses in the same neighborhood in Albuquerque? No. Um, not far. Nothing's it, far in that Albuquerque. That would make it too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How much before we shoot a scene do you guys scout the locations? How long before? Uh, it depends on the scale and, and how much advanced information we have. Sometimes it's a few weeks. Uh, uh, it can even be up to like a month, sometimes a few days. It just depends on what the location is. Uh, we try to warn production if there's something really special that we're looking for. Yeah, they're great about um, doing that. So we that try to... And or this, props too. Like, where did you get all how these? How long this takes? Oh, I mean, no, we haven't. We haven't time. But we, but we, when we were first putting the thing, we were thinking we want it to be really slow. Are we going to have to like somehow slow this thing down? And when they got it in, they were like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is it how slow, slow this thing goes. And right. then the I love it so much that they wait. <laughs> yeah, the chairlift <laughs> company. Out at yes, the, end. It, the chairlift company actually was very nice and provided this uh, for per, you know as, as a piece of promotion, which which is. Just and we were told we couldn't slow it down, and we were a little worried, but it was perfect. No, no. And you know, it's also I, I won't say who, but there was somebody, there was somebody who watched an early cut of this and said, "Oh, c- can't you speed that up?" <laughs> <laughs> and then our answer, our answer was no. I think it's funny. So we have, a, yeah. we have a great test video too. That when the art department first had it installed, and our art director <laughs> Paula Del Santo was on it, and, and they did a whole you know something similar to this to send it to us to see how long it was, and they put it to music. It was it was no so really. Yeah. Why isn't that on the extra <laughs> footage? It, it should be, but it's uh, yeah. Our this is one of the one of the confusing things. About about uh, the way we have to work is because a lot of us are in Burbank and we need to we need to participate 
in, uh, in how some of these decisions are made. So there's a lot of video going back and forth and people are very creative about about showing us what the what they think is the best thing. So tell us why it's called Alpine Shepherd Boy. Uh, okay, Instead here's, my, here's my, whole, my whole theory. First of all, um, when we're trying to think up of a, a, a Hummel, I just pulled Alpine Shepherd Boy out of the air. I thought, you know, there's got to be some kind of Hummel that looks like a right. Shepherd Boy. And they the art, this amazing art department, went right out and found one. They brought it in. I was like, oh my God, it's like an Alpine <laughs> Shepherd Boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in some ways, you know, it's a, it's a Hummel figurine. It's like this hollow cast, and it's like kind of fake art. And that's kind of what uh, Jimmy is doing right now. He's trying to be, you know, uh, not who he is. He's, right. uh, you know, sort of like this hollow version of who, uh, of the lawyer he's going to be, the nice guy that comes out and does wills for old ladies. And, you know, he sincerely thinks that that's what he's going to be doing doing for a little while. But it's not. It's, you know, and and, it, and also with like the, the blonde hair and the the rosy cheeks, the Alpine Shepherd boy is like a, a kitschy version of... Uh, of Jimmy himself here. <laughs> That's fun. But why also is this episode have, called that instead of an O word? Well, before we get to that, I'll oh, just, I just want to give a shout out to Carol Herman, mm-hmm. who is so funny and sweet here. One of our concerns was that people, we're always wondering if people are going to be expecting him to be uh, a ripoff artist. Mm-hmm. And then if he's, is, is he going to rip, is he sincere? Is yeah. he going to rip these old folks off? And hopefully at this point in the season, uh, the audience understands that this guy has, uh, has a moral compass, even though he sometimes uh, deviates from it. And wh- as for, wh- you want to talk about why it's called, why we chose Alp? Because all the other episodes this season have uh, O names. Nacho, uh-huh. Uno, Pimento, Pimento Bingo. Mm. And here we are with Alpine Shepherd Boy. We had an alternative title, uh, which was Jello, ah. <laughs> uh, But it's called Alpine Shepherd Boy. We'll leave it at that. Okay. It is because of this scene uh, in in Carol's performance, I now work the word moxie into my dialogue. (laughs) (laughs) Moxie is such a good word. And you know what's interesting about Carol? Um, She, as a young woman, wanted to be an actor. And um, her parents really frowned on it. And so she went, uh, she became a musician and played viola da gamba for her entire life. And then when she retired, uh, she thought, you know what? I'm I'm retired. I'm going to do what I want. And so she started acting. That's a, that's Great. wonderful. Well, she's she's no, but terrific. I, I love the fact that her parents frowned on the acting profession, but a musician yeah. sounds fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so much more steady. Uh, <laughs> and, and here Pretty is this, toes in show business. Here is oh. this lovely romantic little scene moment, here. Moment, touching moment. Yeah, that would be. It's so intimate. Just the act itself. I love this. I love that people think this seems sexy without anything that you would normally. <laughs> See on, you know, like the people are gonna. It's not hitting you over the head. It's like it's Fifty so, Shades so of Turquoise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but what it tells me is it, it shows me that there's a history that I have not seen yet that allows you to feel comfortable enough to sit there and do that. This mm-hmm. is not the first time this has happened, obviously, mm-hmm. and that's what I like. I like knowing what I don't know. Well, both of them have their guard down, and. Um, Nicole and, and Nina and Melissa and, and Peter, you were there or not? Bradley, all of you guys are great too. Like sometimes it's so easy to, to really laugh at everything Bob's doing, but yeah. but Kim is plays her cards a little closer to her chest than I do, and so it was fun modulating that mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. finding where that is. It's it's always tricky if you have characters in a scene laughing at something that's funny. It, it's 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 almost like you want. Sometimes you want the audience to discover that something not not to ever it's true. not to ever have the response not be real. Uh, if you if you should laugh, you should laugh. But sometimes it's it's yes. it's more fun when you're watching it to discover the discover the laugh. Yes, Molly Smith, uh, my director at Arena Stage, many times told me once that if you cry, the audience won't, and if you laugh, they won't. That's uh, boy, I couldn't. I couldn't um, she was like, there are a few I exceptions. Agree, where I couldn't agree with that more. Where we want to see the person do that, but usually not. That's boy, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's it. And this, of course, is another another gorgeous scene uh, from Arthur Albert. Uh, he does he does such a wonderful job with these, especially I love these low key scenes like this. Kat Bardot, our lovely makeup artist, by the way, is just below frame, constantly taking off the nineteenth layer of blue. Nail <laughs> 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 polish off my toes. <laughs> And we're shooting. We're this is an example. We're shooting daytime. Mm. Uh, this this the windows are all blacked out, and uh, the nail salon people were very nice in letting us 
uh, cut into some of their working day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but it, we actually, as, as I recall, because it was one of the few days I was on set, we actually went straight from there to uh, Mike's booth. Oh, yes. okay. And now we're in Chuck's head, and this mm-hmm. is, uh, the sound you're hearing here is, uh, is, a lot of it is from Dave Porter, our composer, and our, our wonderful sound team. You know, when I look at the scene, I just keep thinking, both in the writing of, of it, but then in the shooting of it, you start with you know so many people and so many yeah. angles and so many different things going on. And I'm always just amazed by how when it's finally edited, how, I mean, you have like a surplus of, I mean, a massive surplus of uh, stuff, and it just gets boiled down into something so fluid. And uh, I mean, this, this is really is, I mean, it's so, flu- I mean, it seems so natural, but it really is, I mean, compliments the skip just... Uh, uh, you know, sort of a master class in editing something for, you know, ease. Mm-hmm. So true. And and this, of course, is uh, the the magnificent Clea Duvall. Who, She's so who, good. Yes. We're all such fans yeah. of hers. Yes. And it, oh, she was so generous to come in for this role for one act. Uh, she is such an accomplished performer. And she brings a groundedness and mm-hmm. a reality to this to this character. Uh, that that I think is just indis- indispensable. It really really makes this really really gives this scene another dimension. And she's also a good she's a good opponent for Jimmy here. For Jimmy, yes, yes, because yeah. she's she she's kind of saying the things that I think we all have wondered about up to mm-hmm. this point in the season. This scene, this sequence, I think was uh, it's interesting because it, this is a very challenging sequence on every level. It's a long sequence Mm -hmm. but there are a lot of characters they all have their own reactions their own points of view skip can you can you can you talk about that well yeah this was this was a tough scene to cut because there were so many pieces with it and and the performances varied at times too so it was just trying to find the right pieces and the right emotions for you know with chuck there too you know trying to talk about him and you know you're trying to keep chuck in the picture where he's comatose and then all of a sudden you know Jimmy and and the doctor are talking and having their conflicts so just trying to get all those pieces and work them together to, to make it feel real it took took me a while we tried it a lot of different ways like how do you make the decision about this is someone's going to be more do the more sympathetic take or someone's going to do the more stone faced take um, it, it's it's just a matter of, of it's like building blocks you have to start someplace and you work into it and if it's working you keep going if it doesn't you back up and start over hmm. and it's just Trying to trying to get the feel for where it's the most grounded and, and okay. not feeling not enough or too much. Mm. It, it's it's interesting that I love the way you put that because it's it's so easy to think of it as uh, an intellectual pursuit or something where you're you're thinking about following guidelines. But it really the way watching you cut and Kelly also it's very musical. It's very much it's very much trying things out and then in, in jazzing on them and then seeing how two things go together. Uh, and in this in this case, this is there were uh, an enormous number of pieces here. And it's it's also a challenge. This sequence was also a challenge, I mean, beautifully realized challenge for Arthur, because here, think about it, you're in a hospital room mm-hmm. and the only sources of light are from the hallway and from the window. And so everything has to be justified from that. And 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 if you think if you watch this carefully, you'll see you'll see that some of the scenes lit by from the window and some of it's lit, lit from the door, but nothing is coming in from the actual room itself. Mm-hmm. Electromagnetic fields. The closer I am to such devices. And even though we see a lot of the uh, the character standing characters moving around a lot, and you think you know, worry about their blocking, Michael had a huge challenge for the blocking in the scene as well. Mm-hmm. He's stationary; he's laying in the bed the entire time, but he has to you know know where where you know the, the, he's being buffeted on all sides by these different characters and their different opinions and, and feelings and everything. And he's anticipating; he's in very naturally looking and keeping track of the entire thing. Uh, you know, even just as I mean, he even made fun about made fun of it as you know not the most physically challenging uh, <laughs> thing he's done, but uh, just keeping in mind where all of his cues are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, like like Bob, like Bob's character, J- Jimmy certainly talks a lot and says a lot, but you know, Chuck has a very precise way of speaking, and he uses a lot of words, and that's you know that's 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 a challenge on a TV schedule. For, uh, you, there has to be a tremendous amount of preparation that these performers do. 
Isn't that right, Ray? Yes. You guys, you guys spend a lot of. Oh, and, and Patrick too. You guys spend a lot of time off the set preparing. Yes, running lines and going well, over, yeah, and I, I, over I, them. Matter of fact, during this entire scene, I'm uh, I'm I'm down the hallway because I am about ready to come in, and what I'm doing is going. Okay, finish this scene. I'm about to make an entrance. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Let me tell you, they took a long time to get to me. We shot this scene for two days. I was eating yeah. sandwiches yeah. and getting coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, but but in that mind, you know, watching and, and listening down the hall for you know what's going on, uh, you do get an appreciation for the enormity of this scene and and uh, the stakes that are in this scene. Because if it's not if it's not played, shot, and edited well, right, the, the the whole thing sort of starts to fall apart. This is a major event, you know, him finally being in the hospital and having to deal with this. And the audience finding out what exactly he at least thinks his disease is, when also, and what it, everybody else thinks of it. And you're there. You're by the bedside. For the, I mean, you're really part of the triumphant. Like, you're back in this inner circle thing, and so that's also uh, a, a new She's trying for so us. desperately to be on the peripheral. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Please don't make me answer. <laughs> Yeah, she, you know, that's, I think that's it's hard. True, she Kim, cares about both well, of them. But. And Kim makes it, as soon as he wakes up, she makes the offer to leave and he makes her oh, stay. Yeah. <laughs> he makes oh, her yeah. I will totally be, I will care so. Kim is the don't be in the delivery room kind of husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it felt, that Philly felt right. But that, that brings up, you know, I think when you start out, you think all, what's really important is being on the person who's talking uh, editorially or blocking wise but oftentimes it's the person who's not talking the person who's mm -hmm. reacting that mm -hmm. that's where the real story is and especially i've seen rookie directors who don't really shoot reaction shots and that's that's just it's just death and of course nicole did such a great job here and 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 really knows where the drama and, is and skip as an editor when when you're in the bay do you find yourself going like oh Oh, there's, I, I need something that doesn't exist now. Sometimes, usually with the directors we've been getting are pretty good with getting us pieces. Right. And it's just a matter of there's a lot of choices. So it's finding that right reaction to something that, that to find that to work the best. But even hearing you say about building the blocks and some performances are, you know, obviously different levels and whatnot. Yeah. That, that's a great reminder for me as an actor that uh, not that you're supposed to be uh, doing the same thing every time, but there is something to be said about constancy from your character's point of view and what's going on, that you don't start going off the rails with, with takes that mm -hmm. give you nothing yeah. to work with. Or you know, no. yeah. That's true, Patrick, but to some extent it's the director's job to look and see, because you always want to go for what's real and what's interesting, right. even more than what's going to match. And then, you know, hopefully as a director, you're giving the editor enough to work with. So, I mean, I would never... I mean, I worked with a, a wonderful actor, Lloyd Bridges, oh. and Lloyd had been in um, some really low-budget movies some, that were not cut or directed very carefully. And he worked out his physical action and his verbal action to the T, so he did exactly the same thing. And the reason for that was he knew that if he didn't match, the, uh, the editors would just use what matched. They, they would just use, mm -hmm. they wouldn't pay attention mm -hmm. to what was a good performance, they would oh, just use what mm -hmm. matched. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there is something to that, but fortunately, we are in a, in a much better situation than they were on Sea Hunt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, we, uh, and we can we can shoot a little bit more, and we certainly have we have more more to work with. And I am not that's nothing to say nothing about Sea Hunt, but in those days, you know, television right. a television show, an hour show, would shoot for literally less than half the time that we have, and so it was it was a really different deal, and and we're 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 just so fortunate to be. This is this we're really making a movie with each one of these episodes. Wouldn't it be oh, great yes, if, yeah. if, if Howard Hamlin showed up right now? I would <laughs> <Yeah>. be great <laughs> if he did. I he's wearing something fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. How yeah. much fun was it to put this outfit together, Jennifer? Well, yeah, and you know what was really <laughs> nice right? was that for, um, I got an opportunity to take him out of his, of his law firm. But at the same time, it still had to smack of that, you know, sartorial aspect. And I kept him in his fabulous blue and some really nice golf pants. If I remember, um, there were some amazing Argyle choices that yes, were just... Yes, there were some Argyle choices. Oh, right. yes, <laughs> yes, they were. Patrick's Somebody on Twitter freeze-framed freeze this through. and said, only Hamlin can rock three shades of Hamlin to go blue. <laughs> 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 and he's always got, he always has something interesting going on with his collar. With his collar. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed. What? It's, yes. it's my little thing. It's my, it's my little, you know, counterpoint with him. He's hmm. fashion forward. It's yeah. absolutely <laughs> very fashion forward. And he's going to change men's collar looks. 
straight through yeah. for the next five Look, seasons. Look, Jennifer Bryan and I have a, already have our uh, Hamlindigo line laid out yes. for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not sure if it's Kmart, Macy's, no, or, or, or Saks. I, I, so. I think it's an even market. It's definitely an upscale line. We're waiting for the phone to ring. I love in that scene, Patrick, the way you play it, the way it's, Bradley, the way you wrote it, the way everybody has written um, for Hamlin, but the way you play it and then the way it's directed, it's... You, you can never totally say he's being a dick because he, there is a way to take what he's saying as matter of fact and just telling the truth and it could be completely projection from Jimmy and there's a way to see it as being a dick and you can see both sides of it every time. The way yeah, Hamlin it. never actually does anything that objectionable or no. unreasonable and it's all... Other it's, than what he does to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> yeah. that's a separate problem. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I love this set so much. Wow. That, that, that beautiful. Um, it's interesting. Well, we did talk about that in in the writers' room, uh, and one of the things we thought about, because you know these two shows are really, we thought about Gretchen and Elliot, and how hmm. the audience hated them so much, even though they really never did anything objectionable right. mm-hmm. that we saw, and that, that that gave us an insight that that the the audience sees things from the main character's point of view. A lot mm. of them do. And so if Jimmy doesn't like somebody, the we're always like predisposed to judge that person mm-hmm. the same way Jimmy does. Oh, and I think in case of Hamlin, and hopefully, I hope to God everyone who's listening to this has watched the whole first season. Uh, I'm not giving anything away. Yeah. Uh, that the, this, is, uh, this is a case where um, the audience and Jimmy, to some extent, are misjudging this guy. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, and that, just real quick in that last bit there. I come in doing really what he wants. He turns on a dime just to thwart me. Yeah. 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 I'm doing nothing wrong. And somehow I'm, I'm doing something wrong right. in a second. And I think that, and having Kim witness that, I think is very interesting because it really mm-hmm. sort of lays the cement of exactly our triumphant of a right. relationship there. And then Kim makes the decision for the first time to yeah. choose him, choose my friendship, and run off. Don't yeah. think I didn't see that. Oh, by the way, this, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to, to Heather Marion who wrote the article that we just saw a glimpse there. If you freeze frame you this newspaper, it. it's yeah. a complete it's a complete article about the whole billboard rescue. Awesome. And she did a great job wow. and the art department did a fantastic yeah. job of laying it out. It's just uh, th- th- this group of people has such an attention to detail that it, it's it's really kind of astounding. And we can see it all now, so it's good. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can't get away with anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and even, even more, when Greek stuff that you used to put in, you right? Know, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Latin or you can't do that anymore. Does that affect you with the labels of uh, with, with wardrobe and such? Yes, yes. And there's you know there are things that I have to get clearance for, images that I can't use, and and then of course HGT with a high def. Things like stripes and moire, that's, you know, um, a challenge. Hmm. There's certain things I have to stay away from. But um, I know those of us with pores are just thrilled by HD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or fly away hairs, you know, backlit hair, that kind of thing. Well, you know, you know I, Ray, you're joking, but it is my frustration <laughs> with, my frustration with digital the way it is now is it's very much about creating sharp edges. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it feels like the whole chain is really designed by, uh, and certainly, you know, there's nothing against Red or certainly any of the people that keep me posted. It's just a, a product of of the way things are working right now. It, it seems like everything's designed to have really sharp pictures of flowers and cities uh, and football games. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not as kind right. to people. And, we and have isn't to, always telling the emotional story. We have to, yes, exactly. We ha- I think we have to work very hard sometimes to use tools that weren't that aren't really uh, made for what we're trying to use yeah, them for. Yeah, for storytelling. And mm-hmm. I, I think yeah. and I think the uh, hopefully I, I think the th- it constantly improves. And of course, Arthur is a master of, of of using this material. And this, you know, for instance, in Chuck's house, uh, if you watch the season as it goes, he started introducing smoke to this location, mm. which really does give it a special look. But you can see the look inside Chuck's house evolve a little bit mm. from the pilot mm. from the pilot up to where we are in the season here. Uh, but this is all, you know, this is all learning how to, op- how to use the, the tools that we have and the... Uh, do you do a lot of post to um, the look of it the, from how it's shot to how we see it? Yes. I mean, this is one of the things that the... Uh, the, not to get too technical, but the red camera gives us what's called a raw image, which means 
there is an enormous amount of information, more than you could see in any particular. But you can choose whether to see into the into the, into the dark areas or have the the light areas come down. And it, we have a tremendous amount of flexibility in post. So Arthur and Vince and I uh, sit with our our colorist Ted Brady and the. Uh, and, and and work very carefully, basically almost shot by shot. And of course, they have they have Arthur has the eye, and he knows he knows mm-hmm. what it should look like. And Vince and I sometimes chime in uh, with a few ideas, but th- we have a tremendous amount of flexibility. Mm-hmm. It, it only really I, cost me about ten percent of my salary to have them wipe away my crow's feet. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 by the way, this drawing are these Bob's drawings? These are Bob's drawings. Yes, because yeah. Bob and I both keep um, journals, and Bob's a very good artist. We yes, look through each other's yeah. journals all the time. I want to see your journal. I've seen Bob's. Oh, and Bob's by the way, here. here comes Jello. This yeah. is uh, Nicole did another fantastic shot here. Love this, that. of course, yeah. this I location. Breaking Bad fans will recognize this is where Tio Tio was uh, uh, yeah. when the cousins came right. to visit him yes. way back in season three, maybe four. I don't remember. Uh-huh. Whatever, yeah. whatever season that was of Breaking Bad, and we've got the. Uh, the wonderful the music that Thomas I found <laughs> from the third man, yeah. which is just tremendous. Uh, Bob does a, a great job of going through here and just talking with these people, uh, with uh, with these retirees who actually were brought in from uh, an assisted living facility and were really, uh, you know, game for everything. But <laughs> there, and he, you know, did several takes where he was ad living, and there was one where he's almost done, and it was a great take, and he's shaking this person's hand, and, and a woman just sort of barges right into the scene and says, "Hi, Bob." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so this, was, this was uh, this was this this I have to I have to give all all hail Bradley here because this was this idea of having Love a it. caricature here was Bradley's idea, and and I think Vince and I were both wondering if it would work, and then it it's just it's just spectacular. Also, if you watch really closely, again, those of you frame by frame folks, if you watch really closely, you'll actually see some of the same folks in uh, some of the same extras in this scene, uh, in later scenes, uh, in Bingo, especially in episode 10, you'll get a, mm. I rec- now I recognize each and every one of them. Mm. <laughs> and, and some are, I mean, but some are actors, some, so some are act- from the... A couple are actors, but, most, facility, of the, but most of them are from the, uh, the people who get featured and have dialogue. But mm-hmm. this lady here is really from a senior facility, I believe. Yes, it's and, so and, uh, She was a special favorite of Bob's. Uh, when we did a scene coming up in episode 10, he, he, he in a couple of places, he said, could this person sit here and this person sit here yeah. so I can, I can have favorites. them to react to? He did have his favorites. You know, um, for those uh, people that came from the assisted living facility, I actually went there and chose their own wardrobe. Oh. Which was very interesting oh. because some of these uh, ladies um, still had their opinion of how they should look. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, we're about to leave Jimmy's story here. And one thing, I, another thing I noticed is that when we start with uh, Jimmy's story on this episode, he's entering through uh, gates, but they're very ornate, fancy gates into what he thinks is going to be the law. But as he's leaving, he's driving through, leaving the story, he's exiting through another gate, but it's a much more humble one. Mm-hmm. But he's also gotten a much more, like, realistic sense of what law practice is. Mm. Well, you, you You've are got the smart. <laughs> Oh, he's bookending the shit out of this episode. That's, yeah, that's right. Well, you know, it's we always say it's like a Swiss watch, a Fabergé egg, or possibly a Fabergé watch or a Swiss yeah. egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just love it's it's such a relief to see Jimmy in a good mood here. Yeah, mm. uh, I was I happened to be there for this one of the few scenes I was actually present for, and I was just so delighted. To see him in that in that Matlock suit in a good mood for once. And now this episode is about to take a turn. I like this hold though. Just the hold. Oh, and it's fabulous to see this location at night, you know, and in, in, in the stillness. And then how we did the transition yes. from yeah. night to day was actually exactly the opposite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we started with the lock off on day and it went to night. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes, it looks like we were there all night to mm-hmm. the to the morning, mm-hmm. but actually it was just the opposite. It was it was a relatively civilized day, as I recall, <laughs> and that is just wow, beautiful. Yeah, a lot of people have asked me the nighttime shots, the one that we were just looking at, um, the exteriors of the nail salon and stuff. That if af- they've asked me if Hopper paintings were influential for any of the art direction of the shots, do you know if they were? Uh, you know, yes. It's, uh, in fact, my my. Uh, 
my parents did not study with Edward Hopper, but they studied with uh, a contemporary of his, really? Reginald Marsh. In fact, my logo at the end of the episode is one of my father's paintings, and he was uh, he was wow. Reginald Marsh's. Uh, Reginald Marsh was his hero, uh, who is a who was a contemporary of Hopper's. Okay. So I, I, I'm I'm always a sucker for those things. And when we Who when we did that? the Look nail that salon, yes. that. when we did the nail, the nail salon, salon, that was absolutely on our minds. Uh, yes. Um, because I so love the, people call it the Ashcan school. It's not the, every. Right. It's not the painters didn't call it that, but it's it's. Uh, I, I love that kind of painting, and it's uh, it's come back, and I love the stillness here uh, of this sequence. And of and, course, where Mike was just sitting was you know Loyola's, where right. where we find him often in Breaking Bad as well in that booth, mm-hmm. and, and that was where the Kettleman sat. That's uh, bomb, right, right by where the Kettleman's, and that was a blue cake. So the, it's, it's, again, a Swiss egg. <laughs> <laughs> and we were very intrigued, and, and Bradley, you and Nicole did such a great job of this. We were intrigued with this, the air of mystery here. Mm-hmm. And yeah. just, I, I think it's something that's so much fun to play with because our audience is so smart and they watch so closely that sometimes not, Holding back on some of the information is very, very powerful, and it's beautifully I cut love to that skin. expression Thank of you. this. It plays so well because it could have. There's so many directions it could have gone wrong, yes. yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't. You know, it, it. You know, they know each other. It's not creepy, but it, there's a tension. It's like this visual showdown. Yes. You know? And of course, this Oblique is the introduction. Yeah. Introduction of Carrie Condon, who is mm-hmm. such oh, such, such an important part, yes. especially of the next episode. Mm-hmm. She's uh, such a good actress. Mm-hmm. She really is. And she's Irish. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize that. And then uh, we, the first time I ever talked to her outside of any sort of scene was we were on the van going to set. And she the started, bro, and I was like, what, came is, out. what is this? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, she has a beautiful, thick Irish accent. Yeah. And I, I'm really hoping the audience at this point has no idea of where the hell this episode is going. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you I didn't when I was reading the script <laughs> well I read the script and still uh, what I love watching about the show is I'm still sort of surprised I'm like oh what's going on oh my gosh it's this this of course is by the way uh, Mike's the same house Mike lived in in, in Breaking Bad mm. so he doesn't move around a lot this is such a strange set of houses is that like is that an area where they duplicate the house over and over with slightly different colors uh, there is a lot of similar houses in this neighborhood. This is in mm. the east downtown neighborhood of Albuquerque. Mm. Probably an old development mm-hmm. or, you know, yeah. It is. Montgomery Ward House, Big Care House kind of thing. Huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I believe the he's... Sears, where you Sears, order. The Sears, the yeah, Sears yeah, yeah, yeah. House, yeah. I believe he's watching The Awful Truth here. He is. is he? Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yes. It's a fantastic oh. choice. And movie. Swiss watch. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is you, you and Nicole, you guys just shot the hell out of this scene. I just love this, this, the, the tension here. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't think there's, I mean, Bob obviously has the gift of gab, but uh, uh, Mike has the, the, the gift of just silence and right? being able to project so much before he even says anything. Because who doesn't pick up a bat and answer the door? Yeah. <laughs> 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 about his life and yeah. his character. And now here we introduce uh, uh. Barry Shabaka Henley and Ahmed Abati, uh, who are going to play such a big role in the next episode. Oh, you and me both. <laughs> yeah. I here, love the knowing look. Yeah, these, yeah. two, these two guys know each other. And that's oh, wow. so, so good. Wow. And you just go, next. Next. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> wow. Well, that, Bradley, one thing I love about this episode, when people ask me the show, is the show a comedy or a drama? I would always think of this episode because it takes such a turn. Yeah, and you know, one of the old uh, things, is, I forget who said it, but they said the difference, uh, yeah, comedy uh, is drama, just not lethal. But there are so many lethal oh, a- implications cool. of, of what goes on in this show that it's, it's never it's never truly comedy because you know there's always some sort of like lethal implication there. Awesome, right. well, thanks, for, thanks for listening. Thanks, thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great.